Number 75. Use principles of atomic structure to answer each of the following. And then we have letter B. So it says the lattice energy of calcium oxide, which is CaO, solid is negative 3,460 kilojoules per mole. The lattice energy of K2O, potassium oxide, is negative 2,240 kilojoules per mole. Account for the difference. Okay, now the thing with lattice energies is this depends on different textbooks, different definitions as to whether it is a negative or a positive. Now, generally speaking, lattice energy should be a positive value. But since I see that there are negative values here, they're kind of doing like the opposite of lattice energy. Now, lattice energy, by definition, right, the, the lattice energy that I know is the energy that it takes to break apart a ionic compound. So it's the amount of energy that will you need to pull away um, the ions, you know, that the ions are attracted to each other. In this case, the calcium and the oxygen are attracted to each other and the amount of energy that is required to split these two ions up. So in terms of lattice energy, usually it's written as a, um, like a balanced equation where it would be calcium oxide, solid, that's the ionic compound, and it breaks up into, now specifically, it's the amount of energy that it needs to break it up into its gas. So you got calcium in the gaseous state plus oxygen in the gaseous state, and it's the ions because there are ions in this ionic compound. So the calcium is a plus two and the oxygen is a negative two. These you can find on your periodic trends as to why it's plus two and negative two. Calcium is in group two, so it's plus two. And then oxygen is in group 6A, 16, or six. That's always a negative two um, charge. When you are um, you know, taking your ionic compound and trying to break up that relationship between the metal and the non-metal, that is going to be your lattice energy. And by going it this way, it's a positive 3,460 kilojoules per mole. Now, if you were trying to create the compound, that's where it's a negative value. But in terms of lattice energy, since you're always starting with your um, ionic structure, your lattice, you're trying to break it apart, those are going to be endothermic uh, reactions. So let's just rewrite the other one as well. K2O, the lattice energy would be to you know, the amount of energy that is needed to pull the potassium away from the oxygen. So then it would be K in the gas state plus oxygen, also in the gas state. Oxygen is a two minus, potassium is in group one, so it's a plus one charge. And since there are two potassiums in K2O, you got two potassiums here. And since we're breaking it apart, technically the lattice energy should be a positive 2,200 and 40 kilojoules per mole. Now remember, um, in terms of energy, there is no such thing as a negative energy. Just know that the negative just has meaning. The negative is talking about releasing this amount of energy into the atmosphere. So it's still technically, you know, a positive value. It's just being stated as there's 3,460 kilojoules that is being released. That's what the negative means. So just know that, you know, in terms of energy, there's no such thing as negative energy. The negative just means that it's being released. Now, we just need to account for the difference between the 3,460 kilojoules per mole and the 2,240 kilojoules per mole. Well, the difference has to come from not the oxygen, because the oxygen is the same for both compounds. The difference has to be between the calcium and the potassium. Now, in terms of energy, the more energy that you need, that means that the compound or the lattice that you had um, was a much stronger compound or ionic compound. So since it requires 3,460 kilojoules, that means that this, you know, took a way more a lot of effort than 2,240 but it was just 
maybe like, you know, more, you know, I guess stronger, we'll say stronger compound. But now it has to do with the calcium, calcium versus potassium. And it's all about how many electrons were lost. Since calcium has a two plus, it's losing two electrons. And if you're losing more electrons, you're getting tighter and tighter. So the amount of electrons that the metal loses, it's becoming, you know, the, the, um, the calcium and the oxygen are becoming closer to each other. So more electrons lost, we'll say more electrons lost makes the interactions closer. And because the calcium and the oxygen are going to be closer to each other than the potassium and the oxygen, because the potassium only lost one electron, so it's not as attracted to the oxygen. Um, the more electrons, what? <laughs> the more electrons toast. Uh, the more electrons, oh, that's a L. That was fun. The more electrons lost makes the inter the interactions closer between the nonmetal and the metal. And the more closer you are, just like in real life, the stronger the bond you have. And thus, the more amount of energy it needs to split the ionic compound together, creating the lattice energy. So that's basically the answer in a nutshell. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for viewing the video and I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests and quizzes and I will talk to you in the future. All right. Okie dokie. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.